Hi everyone and welcome back as I take a look at Season 1 Blake 7 My choice episodes I am reviewing And here we are at the final episode The loosely connected two part story to the last episode Deliverance So let's get going Orac Well, Blake is rather bemused at the past events of Deliverance, what happened to the Space Master ship, and he runs an investigation. Now, while this is going on, Jenna, Avon, Villa, and Gan are showing signs of radiation sickness, which is confirmed by Callie, and unfortunately for them, they don't have the resources to knock it out in the terms of decon drugs, what they need. So ironically, Blake sets course to the planet Aristro, where he was ordered to go in the previous episode. Now, why this is all going on, Blake's curiosity reveals something. The Space Master ship explosion from the last episode confirms the explosion was in the wrong place. This is signs of a deliberate sabotage. And Blake is now wondering if the Federation wanting to get their greedy hands on this fantastic supercomputer. And why this is sort of going on and they're setting course to the planet. Obviously, Callie has now confirmed that Avon Villa... Gan and Jenna have radiation sickness. Now, meanwhile, back on this mysterious planet Astro is the gentleman the micro circuits were being rushed to by his son, and it's all in the previous episode, Deliverance. Ensor, who waits patiently. Ensor is informed a ship has landed, and that ship contains Travis and Servalan. They have a map on them to show an underground route into Ensor's base. So they are proceeding along through these underground chambers. Meanwhile, back on the Liberator, Blake and Avon find out more about Ensor. Ensor created this um, Taran chip or whatever it's called it's all in the federation computers it's what was a big breakthrough and basically Ensor just went on the run from the federation so the liberator arrives at Aristro and um, Blake and Callie teleport down to the surface and await orders from the security sentinel that has intervened with Zen, took him over. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the uh, tunnels, Servalan and Travis are getting ever nearer to Ensor's base. Meanwhile, <clears throat> back on the Liberator, everyone is strung out, uh, sort of having to go at one another slightly, and so on. Because of the radiation sickness they are suffering. Back down on the surface of the planet. Blake and Callie enter a transport tube. That takes them down to Ensor's base. So obviously this transport tube is going to get there before Servalan and Travis. So yes, so Blake and Callie have now entered the base and they are on their way to meet Ensor, the creator of this supercomputer. Blake and Callie come face to face with Ensor, the creator of the supercomputer, or brain, as he likes to refer to it, and he's probably right, known as Aurac. And why they are telling him the events of what has happened, fortunately for them, Ensor has a load of decon P 
medication that can be given to Blake's crew. So that's good news for Blake. And he comes face to face with Ensor's creation, Aurak. And they try to get Ensor uh, out onto the surface to uh, assist with this operation that he needs because they're not surgeons. But unfortunately, there's an explosion and in comes Travis and Serverland blocking their way out through the fastest exit. Bit of a shootout. Travis is going nuts. It's Blake. I want him. <laughs> and so on. Anyway, uh, Ensor, Blake and Callie make their way out of his base through another exit, which takes them through the tunnel system, which is a little longer route than the route taken by Serverland and Travis. Serverland discovers a map and points this out to Travis so they could be on the surface before Blake Kelly. Meanwhile, Avon has become concerned of the time factor of them being out of contact, and he orders Vida with himself to go down to the planet. Unfortunately, in the tunnel system with Blake, Ensor finally passes away. And they were very near the exit point. So Blake and, and Callie with Aurak come up to the top. They run into Serverland and Travis. Serverland orders the execution of Blake. And Avon intervenes by blowing Travis's hand off. The hand with the gun built in. The artificial hand. And this, of course, puts a scupper to Serverland and Travis, particularly Serverland's plan, as she planned all this scheme out right from the start. So, they don't have Aurak. Blake has Aurak. And Avon sort of wants to, um, well, blow them away, you could speak. <laughs> but... Uh, Blake decides, no, let's inform the Federation uh, what happened here. And so, the result of that, he smirks, knowing full well that Serverland and Travis are in deep trouble. And, of course, when they teleport up, Serverland just basically says to Travis, you're in a lot of trouble. So, that's her way out of the issue. Meanwhile, back on the Liberator, Aurak is switched on and questioned and one thing that concerns Blake is about to be shown to him Aurak makes a prediction he puts it on the viewing screen it's the Liberator and the Liberator explodes blows up completely Aurak warns this event is going to happen and there's no escaping it. Blake obviously is in deep shock. He can't believe his eyes. Is Aurak telling the truth? Well, he must be. And that is where season one of Blake Seven ends. And now, my final thoughts. Well, here we go. My thoughts on the final episode of season one of my selection of episodes that I have taken a look at. Obviously, Aurak is loosely connected to Deliverance, so it is a, a two-part story. Uh, overall, I think Aurak is a slightly better story than Deliverance, from my perspective. <laughs> um... There are a little bit here and there niggling issues, um, but I, I'm, I'm not bothered about them too much. Um, Travis is in this episode just makes me laugh. You know, he, he goes, "It's Blake. He's getting away. It's getting away." <laughs> and it really, sh it really shows how um, 
Travis is so possessed in hunting down Blake and killing Blake. <laughs> it's just incredible. Yes, overall, Orac is um, a reasonably good episode. Uh, Orac's prediction, which looks like the Liberator being destroyed, um, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, I, I really cannot make my mind up about that. On one hand, is it, um, is it what was it necessary? Well, I don't know. <laughs> and on the other hand, it's a quite an intriguing cliffhanger to Blake Seven. Um, I'm sort of a bit up in the air about that because I, I don't know. So overall, looking back on the whole season of the uh, series one, um, in the terms of my, my preferences, which are the, all the episodes I've just taken a look at of season one, I think overall it, it's, it's quite a consistent series, Blake Seven. Obviously, there were some episodes there I, I don't like, and that's why I never reviewed them. Um, but overall, it wasn't too bad. Um, so the cliffhanger, as, as I say, is rather peculiar, but uh, nevertheless, it, it's a cliffhanger and that will lead into series two of Blake seven. And of course I will be reviewing series two, Blake seven, my selection of episodes in due course. And on that note, everyone have a great day. Goodbye.